This is not a show I originally planned on reviewing. Considering how many seasonal anime I watch and how long it takes me to make reviews, I only want to review shows that stand out to me in some way. Maybe they're really good and I want more people to watch them. Or maybe they just have a lot of popularity so I, I want to get my thoughts out there on them. Or maybe someone requests it and I want to make them happy and think it might be fun to make their review. Or lastly, maybe this show is just so terrible that I think it would be a lot of fun to rant about them. And well, Grandpa Kitan gets into this last category. And there's really a lot to talk about with this one, so let's get going. I think it's best for me to start off with where the show excels. I know this category isn't only first, but I figure it worked out well here, so why not? The thing that stands out to me about the show visually is how frequently it switches to a more symbolic means of animating the events of the show. Sometimes when shows do it, it really adds to the effect, but then in other shows it just becomes distracting and hurts the show and makes it confusing. I feel that Rampo Keaton does it better than any other show I have seen attempt to tell a story this way. It uses the style to convey different emotions the characters are facing or how they see the world and the people around them. And while this symbolic presentation is used often, there's enough traditional animation that felt normal keeping the symbolic moments from getting in the way. Some people have complained how the background characters are just shown to be outlines, and I do admit this could have been done a bit better, but I felt it did a good job of showing the world from Kobayashi's perspective, illustrating how he sees people as just there, not as people he cares about, and not as people he really just thinks anything of. And there were a couple times where showing the characters this way really added to the impact of a scene. Another thing I liked about the show visually is how much detail they put into certain shots. Two of them that stood out to me were when a page was filled with mathematical equations were shown and when some key or code was shown. The mathematical equations looked realistic for someone looking at probabilities and the code looked like something that could actually run. And yes, I did check both of these because I wanted another excuse to tear apart this show. But I was pleasantly surprised in this case. And overall, visually, this show is probably one of my favorites ever, which is honestly not something I was expecting from it, so that's a good thing. The soundtrack for the show is also great. There is one insert song specifically that stands out, but there are also a lot of good background music that add to the tone of the different scenes. The openings and endings are both great as well, with the lyrics to both of them really fitting with the themes that the show is trying to portray, and the visuals matched quite well as well. So yeah, when it comes to presentation, this show is great. It has its own style through the visuals and music, and that makes it so the show could succeed either with a great deep story with the presentation taking the plot to another level, or instead it could just have the presentation be the main focus and then take the approach of a real cool type show. Unfortunately, neither of those ended up happening. And this is where the show falls apart. It starts off with what feels like a murder mystery anime. There's the murder, our characters are trying to figure out who did it, they arrest the person, and then the same thing happens the next arc or episode or whatever. The problem is that the mysteries really don't make any sense, and the show fails completely to draw the viewer in to try to get the viewer to piece together things as the main character figures it out. A good portion of the time, the murderer is someone we don't know at all, which makes solving the crime to have no payoff. Another major problem with the show is its inconsistent tone. The overall plot of the show is very serious. The murders aren't just someone being shot, but they involve horribly mutilating the body or other terrible things. We get into issues like suicide, trying to find meaning in life, wanting to end your life, and then other things like child abuse. But then you have comedy thrown in, such as an overly energetic medical examiner with talking cadavers and just other comedy that doesn't fit at all. Now, I am a big fan of comedy, and I won't say a serious show can't have moments of comedy, but here it was just way, way too jarring to take the show seriously. And you also have a main character who is a middle school boy who likes like a girl and likes wearing dresses. It just feels like this was thrown into appeal to otaku fetishes, and well, it might have succeeded. But by far the worst part of the story is the fact that it makes absolutely no sense. And out of all the genres, mystery is the one where making sense is the most important. With fantasy, you can hand wave things with magic. Action, you can circumvent logic by having the rule of cool. Romance, you just care about the feels of them getting together, so things don't have to make sense. Comedy, you can have absurd things happen, and that makes the show better. But mystery is all about the how and why things are happening, with hints slowly given as a picture is revealed. But as I said before, there is no payoff to the mystery, so that's ruined. And any logic the show is trying to present just falls flat. It's not even to the point where things aren't explained. It's that things happen, and they say things that are flat out impossible or wrong. One example of this is when some people are killed by large objects falling onto them. Oh yeah, I should say this is a spoiler, but it really added nothing to the plot and didn't feel like a surprise, so don't worry about it. I also spoil some things later on too, but again, it doesn't matter. Don't watch the show, just 
listen to me rant. That would be fun. Anyway, it turned out the murderer purchased faulty gears to hold these objects knowing that the gears would break, causing the objects to fall. Specifically, she was able to calculate the exact time these gears would break, which would have been months or years after they were installed. Figuring out the exact time they would break within like a minute or two is impossible, or at least it would be without very complicated and powerful simulation tools, so the fact that someone who is basically a secretary did it makes absolutely no sense. Oh, but of course, it gets even worse. We are then introduced to Dark Star, a formula that can change society. And by that, I mean predict the future. And by that, I mean change the world. And by that, I mean create 20 faces. Does that make any sense to you? If not, then I've explained it well. Oh, and despite the fact they keep calling it a formula, Dark Star is more accurately a computer program or a simulation. Basically, it takes in some type of input we are never specified and predicts the future. It's also apparently possible to ask it how to toss a metaphorical pebble into the world and have it lead to certain people's deaths. You may wonder how it is possible, but this is answered by chaos theory and quantum mechanics. In other words, big words that the writers decide to throw in to make them sound smart. Hint, they aren't smart. Of course, we're never shown what these pebbles are that can lead to death, nor shown how a chain reaction could occur that would lead to them, and you can't forget about the fact that there's a flaw in the formula that means that one of the creators must die. What is a flaw, you might be asking? Well, I have no idea whatsoever, and it doesn't seem like these writers do either. Let's look a little bit closer at what Dark Star does. According to the show, it's a formula that predicts the future, which could be taken to mean that it's a simulation that can perfectly predict the state of the world honing in on certain events, like events related to a murder or an investigation or something like that. So how would something like this work? Well, some would say that the universe is deterministic, that based off of the initial state, then it's possible to know the state of the universe at a later time. Let's assume this is true. But in order to know this, you must know completely and accurately the initial state and all the rules that govern how it would change. Which apparently these two kids were able to figure out and put on a computer program that can run on a laptop and the program could run in a reasonable amount of time. Think about how much information this would require. You would need to know complete information about every person including how they thought, how they made decisions, how they would react to anything. You'd also need a perfect physics simulation. You'd also need to take into account all the animals that could affect you, like a squirrel running in front of the car or a dog barking at three in the morning. You'd also need to account for weather like a tornado coming or lightning or rain or wind or anything like that. You'd also need to take into account tiny things like when computers would break which would delay someone getting their job done. Well, unless it's a Windows 10 computer, then something going wrong could pretty much be assumed. And yes, I'm willing to admit that shows don't need to be completely realistic even when they are supposedly taking place in the real world. But Dark Star fails completely to be anything close to the realm of possibility if that makes the entire premise of the last half of the show fall flat, which makes the story fail on pretty much every level possible. If you're going to tackle something serious, you need to have a strong enough story to support it, but instead these serious themes just are completely laughable. It makes the show collapse on itself even more. Characters here range from decent to just pointless and annoying. Starting with the best character, we have the young detective Akatsuchi. He is basically a copy of Sherlock Holmes, though a bit younger. Anyway, he is a genius, very aloof, fair and caring toward most people around him. If you have seen Sherlock, then you kind of have an idea what this character is like. And while this type of character isn't unique, he makes a decent lead for a mystery show, as seeing someone as smart as him solve mysteries can be a lot of fun. The problem is that he is an overpowered protagonist in like five different ways. First, in the physical sense, he is able to beat people up and fight his way through crowds thanks to some online karate courses which his body hasn't gotten used to, which means he didn't practice, which means how can the internet teach you karate to that degree. And there's also his mental state where he's able to solve mysteries with crazy leaps of logic that really make absolutely no sense if you think about them much, nor are we shown in the pieces that he has to lead to these conclusions. And then there's also the fact that this crazy girl falls in love with him. Because why not? You have to have your main lead have the fangirls all over him. And he was the best character. Next, we have Kobayashi, who is a young boy framed for a murder early on. His primary trait, other than looking like a girl and the fact that he likes to wear dresses, is the fact that he finds much of life uninteresting, though he enjoys solving mysteries, which leads him to sort of become Akachi's apprentice. The fact that he doesn't care about the people around him, or even himself, makes him very hard to relate to, and the fact that he constantly ignores the advice given to him by Hashiba makes him very annoying and unlikable. And lastly, we have Hashiba, who is Kobayashi's only friend. The only trait that he has is that he cares about Kobayashi, which is admirable and makes him at least somewhat likable, but there's really no depth to him and he's the main character. And there's also the fact that it's hinted that Hashiba has romantic feelings for Kobayashi, which really felt pointless and in a way tarnishes the friendship that they had. Oh yeah, and this feeling goes nowhere, so it's just like a pointless addition that was probably just to add to the fetishes of the people watching. And yeah, there are some side characters too, but I really don't want to talk about them. I've been ranting for a while, haven't I? So let's just move on to my final thoughts. 
Grandpa Keaton was based off the works of the author Edgar Rampo. I think that's how you pronounce his name, but I probably pronounced lots of names wrong in this review. Oh well. Anyway, this show was a tribute to his work. And after seeing this show, I have to question if the staff admired him as much as teenage boys admire Stephanie Meyer. Because if this show is trying to lift up Rampo, then they did a horrible job of it. The production values are good, that much is true, but that means nothing if the story is terrible. So we move on to the final score. And I give Rampo Keaton an overall score of a 3.76 and a rating of Skip It. Because there's nothing really worth watching in this show unless you just want to watch something bad because you think it might be fun. Which, in that case, sure, go ahead, here's a good one. Moving on to recommendations, my first recommendation is for Parasite. The reason for this is that it's a very suspenseful show that I saw recently and really think it's awesome that you should go watch. Yeah, I know, like, the genres are completely different, but they are both said to be horror in some ways. So, yeah, go with that. Second recommendation, I could go with something like Death Note because that's, like, the mystery, but everyone has seen it. So, I'd rather recommend something else. So, let's instead go with Mononoke because it is a horror, it has mysteries in it, and, yeah, some people think it's awesome. I won't go that far, but it's pretty good, so, yeah, go check it out. And that concludes my review. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe, whatever those things, if you want or not, or dislike, unsubscribe. I guess you can't really uncomment unless you like delete a previous comment, but if you want to do that, please don't. I like my comments and subscribers. Anyway, talk to you later.